94 years of the Oscars, only five black men were ever granted the Oscars. And that was your husband's biggest night. That look, actually, for me, I think as long as she gave the look, you just be like, oh, you know what? Oh, okay, I got to do something about this. And you're the grown up now. So let's take responsibility and fix these things. Let's not continue the blame cycle. Continue to say, well, I act the way I do because that's what happened to me as a kid. You have someone who acted out of their emotions and Chris Rock, who could have acted out of his emotions because he was physically abused and then held it and continued to do his job. Okay, I'm gonna leave to you guys to, to tell me like, is this how you expect your man to react, to protect you? And then when you come back, you start crying. And then after that, you apologize to the person that is slapped because he was trying to protect you. What the apology for? Welcome to Better Self Podcast. This is Fun Christ, and today we're gonna talk about some one of the hardest topic of topic of I don't know if this year, but like you know, beginning of the year, uh, we're gonna talk about the Will Smith and Jada slash you know uh, Chris Rock uh, issue that happened actually. Um, yeah. So as a guest today, I have Tracy, and I also have Celia. So we're gonna just like talk about in a different like area we're going to talk about the jokes jada the trouble and then where we actually can push the protection you know against women because a lot of people saying like you know he's trying to protect women a lot of people same people say like we have me is being controlled and how far we as a comedian you, you can actually push the joke as well this is the kind of thing i actually want to you know go through so anyway so before we start just want you guys to introduce yourself just for like a few seconds so the audience gonna know who you are we're gonna start with uh yeah tracy go on Hi, my name is Tracy Joseph. I am the owner and visionary of Cakes for Delightful Baking. We are a concierge bakery located in the U.S. in the Waterbury area of Connecticut, the state of Connecticut. Um, I am also um, the owner and founder of Executive HR Consulting Services, which is a woman and black owned uh, consulting firm for HR. Great. Hi, everyone. Fun Christ, thank you for having me. Thank you for, for the good pronunciation as well. You're welcome. <laughs> See, I knew I could do it. <laughs> so I am uh, the founder of Pumped Up Parenting and the founder of the International Day of Calm, which is taking place on April 5th. The summit is taking place on April 4th and 5th, as I am on a mission to stop a million parents from yelling at their kids. And now I've decided the whole world needs to calm down, which is so appropriately demonstrated by Will Smith. So it was very handy for him to give this demonstration of how not to act. Uh, I'm also the founder of Fun Fit Family Fitness, and my life's work for the past 40 some years has been all about the health and well wellness of children because we are raising adults, not children. And that's why I do what I do. Great. All right, let's just get it started. I'm not going to waste on the time. So Will Smith, what happened the whole the night? He went there. He actually, I don't know if he's a punch. He looks weak to me. I think it's more like uh, a slap that he gave to, uh, you know, to, to Rick, uh, Rick Rock. Yeah, Chris Rock, sorry. So, yeah. So, what was your reaction, first of all? Yeah, anyone? Tracy, oh, so, I do thought you, guys you were going to speak. Tracy, you like you were about to say <laughs> something. Like Tracy, I feel like there's a lot of things <laughs> my, you want to say. I, uh, honestly, you know my first yeah. reaction was yeah. it was totally inappropriate. Mm, okay. It, it was not deemed and you know as I read the comments everyone justified the the violence because of protection and I feel like there's so many layers to pull back regarding that incident that um you know first glance not appropriate at all mm. and then second um thought I had is the problem with society protection does not equal physical aggression he could have said things verbally that would have had a bigger impact that allowed everyone to have awareness about the medical issue that they are claiming that she has, um, but also hold his dignity. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree. think 
Yeah. Uh, one of the things I work to do with parents and people as a whole, because I don't just work with parents, is learning to regulate your emotions, learning to think before you act and react. Yes. And what he did was a totally emotional reaction. And I always feel like, wouldn't it have been wonderful if instead of that aggressive reaction that he had against Chris Rock, if he had taken Jada, who clearly was not amused, and put his arm around her, gave her a kiss, you know, really comfort her, comforted her, um, what kind of, you know, message would that have sent? You know, they would have seen what a great supportive husband he is. It would have sent the same message that he was not happy, but it would have sent it in a totally peaceful calm, constructive way, instead of just being like, you know, banging his chest, I, you know, I am going to protect my woman and I'm going to go punch this guy in the face, yeah. which is assault. So I think there would have definitely been many better ways. Yeah. But, but the funny about the funny thing about it, if you actually go back and watch the video, I know like we are talking about like being emotional, he just went there and then just like do what he did. But when you watch the video at the start, I think when when uh, Chris Rock actually made a joke, Will Smith didn't really react in a bad way. He actually laughed. He was actually laughing. He was ah, you know, that's funny. And the thing is, his wife wasn't laughing. So what I believe, I think is because what he did wasn't actually his reaction because he wasn't really mad at it. I believe maybe we haven't seen something. I think when he's so, I think them two, I think they always have a conversation at home or something. You know his wife because she haven't said much, but I think that look actually for me, I think as long as she gave the look, he just be like, oh, you know what? Oh, okay, I gotta do something about this, and he just went there. He did it. I don't know if you guys agree with me. No, I agree. It was very much prompted because his reaction was genuine. He laughed about it. Chris Rock was doing his job. Yeah, he laughed. Uh, whether the the joke was tasteful or not is debatable, but he laughed about it. And Jada did not. She rolled her eyes and then looked at her husband and said, oh, you laughing too? Like, you think this is funny? Mm. But she displayed a hurt. And if anyone knows about Will Smith, he plays very emotional acting. Mm. And he just wrote a book about wanting to protect those that he loved. And who more to protect than your wife, who's supposed to be your wife. So he had to do something and I felt like he was pressured. And what we also seen was the breakdown of a man in real time. Mm. From the time that she was speaking about her marriage, from the time that the entanglement happened, from yeah. the time yeah. that everyone made jokes about him being second choice, because this woman who was his wife that's supposed to be undergirding him and protecting him equally, stated that he was a second option yeah i think that's what people forget actually it was the same woman actually put everything out there for him like actually right. he like he just put all the private things like out there to try to put him mm -hmm. down and nobody was there to kind of like cheer him up or something you know like other than the people online like nobody was there actually for will smith you always the one protecting this woman no matter what oh and this is the this is the example of toxicity when you don't choose your wife wisely mm. because when my husband because you could see that he was emotional when he was cussing when he returned back to his chair you can see him holding back tears yeah. and as a wife you're that's supposed to be your safe place as a husband and vice versa she did not console him when he went there to smack Chris Rock, the other view of her was, well, that's what you yeah, did. Yeah, she was actually and laughing. Then laughing. Like, yeah, that's my man. That's not a laughing matter. 94 years of the Oscars, only five Black men were ever granted the Oscars, and that was your husband's biggest night. Yeah. And you're telling me that you shouldn't, you couldn't show any decorum? You could not hold that in? You could not persuade or speak to your husband in a manner saying, no, let's address this after? That's a problem. Yeah. And it's a problem with emotional regulation yeah. and emotional communication. Yeah. And that's those are two big things that we as humans need to work on in our own mind. 
Yeah, I, you right. know, the human brain doesn't fully develop until you're 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And nothing about emotion is regulated. It's all learned. Yeah. And we have to be the ones that we have to be able to regulate our own emotions as adults. Yes. People throw tantrums. Yeah. Adults throw it. It's not just for toddlers. And if yeah. you're busy throwing a tantrum or you're busy celebrating someone who's being aggressive, that's your your issue too. Yes. And then it creates the societal norms as well. And I do not want the norm to be what Will Smith did. I think that he should have consequences for his actions yeah, sure. because all adults do. How would you feel if you go to work yeah. doing your job, someone gets upset, the fact yeah. that approved joke, because let's face it, it was an approved joke was said and you react and are, are physically harmed. And then they do not remove the sh the threat. They ask, "Hey, do you can you leave?" And they give him like the the Grammy. I mean, the whatever the, the Oscar. They actually give him after Academy that. Academy yeah, he's like, "Oh, you know Oscar. what?" It just makes things worse for me, actually. Yeah, well, it, and and like we said, it's it's a shame too that the whole thing blew up and transpired this way because here was this great moment, like you said, Tracy, that he should have had. And instead, the whole thing was tainted. And what happened, the reality of what happened, the reality of his reaction, his wife's reaction, the only one that had a decent reaction was Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, he, I think he, yeah, he could have punched was, back, but he just kind believe. of. You haven't ever you know, touched his own face. Calm. He was just standing there. I never see somebody getting slapped without even touching your face. Just to well. Try. He I think did was react, surprised. but he he held his composure. And exactly. that's what you see in different spectrums, to Celia's point, mm. the emotional intelligence between adults. You have someone who acted out of their emotions and Chris Rock, who could have acted out of his emotions because he was physically abused and then held it and continued to do his job. Exactly. He went and made exactly. a joke out of his physical abuse. Yeah, yep. but before before we actually go uh, deeper, actually, I know a lot of people talking about the joke, the joke, the joke. Was it really like about, because I know like when somebody is like having a health problem or whatever issue you have, you cannot really make joke of, of that. But we all know Hollywood, the way, thing, the way things work, all right? It's not really like the first time. I don't even know if Chris Rock really knew about what was happening in Jada life? You know, they're so busy talking about entanglement, all those things. I don't know, like, did, did you really know about it? And what is the limit really as a comedian? Like, what is the limit of kind of joke that people do? As I was saying something on my Facebook the other day, people have been doing, like, making jokes of Michael Jackson for over, I don't know how many years. We all know, like, Michael Jackson, he had vitiligo. Even people don't want to believe it. Now people believe it. He have, like, a skin condition. People used to make fun of him on many, like, like all comedian meant for Michael Jackson, but it was no, never shocking. Even today, people still doing that. So I just, is it because she's a woman or yeah. What is your, your opinion on that when so it comes to you? Here's the thing about comedians and, and guys, I am clearly of another generation than you two are. Yeah. Comedians have been making fun of people forever, forever. That's what they do. And we just a comedian. You, know, you guys may not remember Don Rickles. Don Rickles was a guy that came on. I mean, he would never be allowed in this day and age. He came on stage and he would make fun of everybody in the audience. And it was hysterical because you have to learn to laugh at yourself. You have to find things funny because you know why? Things are funny. And when you can make light of a situation, it actually alleviates the stress and the chaos, a lot of that situation. Laughter really is the best medicine. But I was listening to Howard Stern and he made an excellent point. And that is that he didn't think comedians should even be MCs at the Oscars because Hollywood is not a place where people take themselves lightly. They're very serious. So can they laugh at themselves? I don't know. I don't know as too many of them can. And I think that's an excellent point. So I think comedy is transitioning to where many comics are not just leaving the profession, because, but they're being much more guarded on the jokes they make and what they say. And those that 
don't want to do that. Yeah, it's hard for them. It's very Far challenging. Out. You can't be a comedian. And it's, they, they live in like Richard Power and all those people, they used to do good because they used to talk about things I actually we think about, but we don't say it. That's, that right. was a fun part. Like, yeah, go on. And Tracy, you want to add something about this? Absolutely. I mean, to Celia's point, I think about Archie, you know, mm -hmm. I think about Martin Lawrence, you know, making fun of Cole and Tommy's hair or Tommy not having a job or not keeping a woman and, you know, sensitive topics, mm -hmm. you know, even going down the, you know, speaking about how men work, can you get a lady, can you satisfy her? Those yeah. are all points that can be sensitive. So let's dissect the joke. Was it really about her hair? Because G.I. Jane, you know, actually broke norms right, in that right. movie. It was about a woman's strength and being able to keep up. So and her whole empowerment. And, of and that empowerment. Movie. Exactly. So what, what was really wrong with the joke? Now, bald head, four days before the Oscars, Jada said, as a Black woman and, you know, having to have European hairstyles, things of that nature is going on. She said, I love my bald head. I embrace it. Yeah. So and she looks stunning. I mean, it's not beautiful. like, I mean, she, she'd be stunning with or without hair. So. Right. Curly, straight, bald. She always, and one thing about Jada, have always, always executed a perfect wardrobe. So yeah. what was really offensive? Was it the fact that, you know, um, Demi Moore, who played GI at that point, um, was cheated on by her husband with a much younger woman, almost half the age? And was that a, a real joke about their marriage? And then if that's the case, Regina King earlier that day mentioned that Will was single. And the same, you know, Oscars. So what was really offensive? Because you said that you took light about your own hair. Right. And I think what people do is they read too much into th things. Yeah. They overthink, you know, a joke, mm -hmm. a statement. Like they, they read so many things into what could be just, like you say, Tracy, a simple joke. Yeah. And G.I. Jane, pretty good movie about woman in power, like kind of groundbreaking movie. Right. And then let's be honest. Her PR is going to probably pitch her um, her skills to something like Wakanda soldiers who have all bald head, all black That's women, not, yeah. to G.I. Jane. Why not have a remake of G.I. Jane for, you know, leading actress be black, bald head, empowerment? What's wrong with that? She should have looked at that and said, you know, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I, 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 I think... see you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think like, um, the most sh shocking part about it, if, I would say... If um, Will, Smith, Will Smith was just like an artist, a rapper, I would understand it. I would understand his reaction. But the thing is, he came from the same field as Chris Rock. He's a comedian. He's, like, he's, a, he's an actor. He's, he know exactly. He know the rule. Like, they always roast each other. Like, if Kevin, Kevin Hart was there, he was going to do the same thing. They always do that to each other. I think the reaction, actually, he, he overreacted because I think it was just too much. As you guys are saying, like, we don't even know if Chris Rock knew about this. We don't, nobody know. It's not like something like everybody know, like, you know, Jada have such an issue. Exactly. Like, like most people really don't really care about it. People really don't really know. Just when you think about it, it's just too much. Like the way he actually react and the way people are actually reacting as well. I feel like there's a lot of double standards. So it's not, it's not like we never heard about this kind of joke before. We heard worse than that. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? So I know there is a reaction as well. The joke as we all agree, but do you think, because a lot of people are saying like, oh, you know what? That's how you should protect your woman, you guys as women. So how do you think, feel about people are saying today, yeah, real man, that's how you do it. That's how you protect your queen. That's why, because I see that a lot. I was like, okay, I'm going to leave it to you guys to, to tell me like, is this how you expect your man to react, to protect you? And then when you come back, you start crying. And then after that, you apologize to the person that is slapped because he was trying to protect you. What are the apology for? No, I, I don't expect it at all. I expect a man to show the calm, mm. to address the issue accordingly, mm. because that shows leadership. It shows emotional intelligence. Yep. It shows yep. protection, but it also shows guidance. 
right? And as a woman and believing that a man should lead, you know, there might be um, listeners that don't agree with that. But for me, I do. Um, I, I expect him to lead by example. You know, that was not a um, an aggression moment. That physical aggression was not needed. And for me, I would have probably looked at him at, you know, because Jada has a right to feel some type of way, right? Um, but I wouldn't say I needed you to do that. You know, yeah. women can stand up for themselves. We actually do have that power. But bullies should not be accepted anywhere. You know, mm. there's a lot of bullies going on in this world. And, mm. you know, we know there's a war over in Russia and Ukraine because of a bully. And bullies, wherever they are, however they show up, are still bullies. It's not something you justify mm -hmm. being aggressive and being a bully because you're defending someone. Chaos and yelling and screaming and aggression only creates more aggression and chaos and screaming. Mm -hmm. Calm creates more calm. And if we are going to be an example for the next generation, things like this in a public arena, if you're upset, have the intelligence to say, you know what, I think we'll take this off screen and discuss it. Because had they just let it pass, it almost would have gone unnoticed. Really, would everyone, yeah. anyone had dwell, would anyone dwell on that? joke that line no yeah people we would have like, gone on yeah i mean people wouldn't even pay attention to that i think they just like i don't know but do you guys think it was fake mm -hmm. anything's we possible don't in hollywood. Think it was fake and anything is possible in hollywood but no when you see chris rock's reaction um thereafter and how he was still processing everything that happened in his body language, I watched body language, his mm. body language, how he turned, he was still processing. That was very real for him. Yeah, and I agree. the most humiliating moment of his career was displayed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was genuinely surprised. And I feel like Will was genuinely um, out, not in control yeah. of his own reaction because the thing i mean about when Will he Smith, started yeah. screaming afterwards came back to his seat i, I there is no way that was staged I, I just don't believe it because the thing about will smith he actually bore a lot of personality in one night the, his reaction like first reaction he laughed at the joke a minute later he just one day become aggressive and after that he went on stage he cried and he talked about love i'm like there's something is not right he's like I feel like he wasn't being himself. I think he, like he was forced to do something like he didn't want to do. That, you, yeah. you did see multiple personalities within him within that short time span. And that's where I, I go back to saying you saw the deterioration, the breakdown of a man hmm. right before our eyes. Will has been in a crying, crying state, an emotional state for a very long time. For the last three years, his family has been attacked. You know, we can argue about the semantics of why, but as a man, he he's watching that and he's internalizing that. And I think, you know, the joke was, and seeing his wife face was really the nail in a coffin for him. I do think society is not ready to kind of like pull men in that box. Like men can, can also be a victim because what we see was that it was actually a woman, what I believe actually, who actually emotionally actually abused his husband and to the point of he's actually out of control. He just act out of fears or I don't know, fear for what. I feel like, yeah, that's what I saw that night. But I yeah, think people don't talk too much about this. victims. You yeah, know, they're, they're put in society and they're supposed to have no emotion. I mean, for years, men were raised as, you know, be tough, don't cry, don't feel, don't have emotion, you know. You you are the you are the hunter gatherer and that is your job and you must stand tall, and the fact is that it's not easy 
out there in this world. There's nothing easy about this world. And being a man, being a woman, trying to achieve all the things that we want to achieve in a world that really celebrates success and stardom and all of that, and yet still be a human being is not so easy. Right. And I think he was definitely challenged at this moment. I, I think, you know, and I agree with you 100%. Um, that stereotype that men have to be strong, they cannot show emotion. Um, it, it's a pseudo mentality that we have. They are human. Men are human. They deserve to have that display, that platform where they feel safe to do so and release. Mm. They can And what we saw was a man holding in his emotion, that buildup. And he really could not take it anymore. He was, get, and men can be abused and they can be emotionally abused. And that was a display. When you listen to your wife put you down, um, I think there's a letter circulating too where his daughter wrote two Yeah, yeah, Tupac. I saw that letter. Oh my God. Um, I think we need to go down to that. I saw that letter. Right. You know, you, you're internalizing that. My wife loves a man so much that my child acknowledged this man. You yeah. take that. Now my wife is sleeping with the man who's my, my son's friend under my nose. I internalize that. I listen to my wife say I'm a second choice. I internalize that. I listen to my wife say I'm going to do whatever I want because he wants me to be happy. I internalize that. I hold that. I listen to jokes coming um, towards my family, my son, about how they want to display themselves. I internalize that. And now here I am for the second time being joked about at an Oscars by the same person. This is my breaking point. It, it's sad. It yeah. really is it, sad. It is sad. And I think he had a lot of inner feelings that as an actor, you don't show. I mean, actors are great at being other people, never yeah. being themselves. And I think it's a buildup. All the stuff with Jada's show, was it Red Table? Yes. Yeah. Where she talks I think about that, everything. Yeah, that, that show is everything like- Everything is put out there. Yeah, but the thing is, everything is, she talk about everything. It's like, when you talk about her family, it's like everything against like her husband, everything is like to pull him down. I believe what they're going to do now, they're going to go back to the red, red whatever they call it. To actually do the same thing as well. I think what Tracy was saying about the letter, if I can to read it, is like the letter they were saying, like that's the letter that Willow, the the girl, actually wrote to to, to wanted to write to Tupac. She said, "Dear Tupac, I know you are alive someplace. I think my mommy really miss you. Can you please come back? Can you come back so so my mommy can be can be happy? I wish you were here. I really do love you, Willow." So, <laughs> what do you guys think? I would be mortified. Just forget as a man, but as a woman coming across a letter from my son or my child, and it's about another woman that they have learned to love through my husband. That is powerful. That means that name was mentioned so much that yeah. my child took on my emotion. Yeah. And you don't know what was shared with her. No. Which which but, is part of the problem with like blended families once they're not together anymore. Right. There's all this information that gets shared with children that they really aren't even emotionally able to understand. And then there's that card played. And that's a lot that happened here. I mean, she's been turned basically against her dad. Mm -hmm. I think like Will Smith, to her I mom. yeah, I don't, I wonder how his kids actually feel about him. If they <clears> see <throat> him as, I don't know if he's weird because when your child write this kind of thing and if you see the way, and then your mother, you know, used to date to see like your friends and, and it's like in a picture, I wonder where he is actually on the picture as a man. I, I don't know. I I think that's hard. That's hard to kind of swallow for anyone, yeah. whether male or female. That your kid 
you want them to look up to you. You want them to love you. You know, you sacrifice so much. Um, and then for them to feel that their mother is not happy with you. And this is your biological child. And she keeps child. saying that as well. That's yeah, the worst so thing, yeah. That, that's, I don't know. You want know to be the role model for your children. You want them to look up to you. You want them to learn from you. You want them to see the relationship that you have with your partner so that they learn to they learn what a loving, respectful, trusting relationship is. So when they go out in the world or they're with siblings or friends or future love interests, they know what a good, respectful relationship full of love and happiness is. And when you bring your children into a conflicted relationship, what are you actually teaching them? That that's okay? Yeah. There, there's so many lessons within your actions that you have yeah. to be careful what you display. And um, for his son to come right after him and say, that's how we do it. Yeah, I saw you're that. You're condoning that. <laughs> yeah. And this is not the first time Will smacked someone. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's not note the that time. the the man who he believed tried to kiss him on the red red carpet somewhere, mm -hmm. and then the other individual um, who hugged Jada for too long. We're not talking oh. about this is a repeated behavior he has where his first thought is to smack someone. That's almost like similar to a parent to a mm -hmm. child who is like, stop that. Right. But you're doing that to an adult. Most grown men. Yeah. Because he doesn't know how to regulate his emotions. And because his son is like, that's how we do it here in this family. That's a whole family that doesn't know how to regulate their it emotions. It was like some type of proud, pride. Like, you know, like, yeah, that's how we do it. You know, like, yeah, don't touch the smith. But, and then again, there is also a message behind. If you was really how to do it, how to stand for Will Smith was not going to break down. What do you guys think about his reaction after that? Like when he went for a speech, I don't know if you guys actually saw that part, what he was saying and everything. And there was actually a reaction of another actor as well. I, I forgot his name. Um, I think, I don't know if it was Denzel Washington, I think. Um, somebody actually trying to, anyway. So what he was saying, what do you guys think about his reaction after that? That, yeah. I think? think it was contradictory. Because the first part, you will talk about love and you apologize not to Chris Rock, but actually to the Grammy and to the no. Oscar family. And he didn't yet. apologize to Chris until his Instagram yeah. post. Mm -hmm. So that part, what do you guys think? I think it was PR. It was him trying to smooth things over, break down with the emotions, mm. um, but it was not genuine. He wanted I to victimize think... himself, maybe. Yeah, I, and that's the part that I don't agree with. Take accountability. You right. did that action. Where's your accountability? You can't blame anything else on anyone. And that's exactly, Tracy, what I was going to say. You have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. there, there's no one to blame but yourself. You need to be in control. We are never in control of what happens to us. Right. We are 100% in control of the way we respond to it. Absolutely. And that's what he should have done. I mean, he may not be capable of doing it, you know, but that's what he should have done. It's all me. There's mm -hmm. no one to blame. It's not the joke. It's not even my wife. Because even with her innuendos, he did not have to proceed down the path that he proceeded. Right. You know, bottom line is he's not apologetic for what he did. Yeah. It, he is justifying it based upon protecting his wife and to Celia's point, take accountability. We, we talk about being grown and being mature. Maturity is accountability. We have to be accountable. He committed batter. He thought about it and he did it. He could have stopped himself the whole, during the walk, before he paused and smacked him, he had a lot of turning points that he chose not to do. And even if he was remorseful in some way during his speech about love, he could have embraced that moment 
to show how mature he was. Even call Chris Rock or something. Just say something like, you know what, I apologize. I don't know what happened. I overreacted. You know, my wife, this, this. You should have had something like that. I think people was going to feel some type of way. Right. Vulnerability. So, yeah. It's okay to be vulnerable. And I think that we would have respected that more saying, you know what, this is not what I wanted to display. And I apologize for my physical abuse. I don't know how else to protect my family from all of the threats and, you know, behaviors and words that have been casted towards us for X amount of years. Oh. And I'm at my breaking point. I think that we could have related to that because we are human. We all make mistakes, but you exactly. don't get to hit somebody and then not take accountability mm -hmm. and then give a PR apology on social media. Doesn't exactly. Work. That's exactly what I was going to say, Tracy. We're all human and we all make mistakes. You know, we all respond in a way we did not intend to. There are situations, even the, the best, calmest person can be provoked in a way they don't want to. So mm -hmm. you admit to that mistake, you take responsibility and you apologize because we've all done it. And right. we are, mistakes are given to us to learn from them. Right. So hopefully he will learn if he takes responsibility. This was not his best choice. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. There were a lot of other things he could have done except what he did. And there's, not, a, there's not another part. So, you know, when he actually he did it after that, when he came back, the fact he starts shouting, like, you know, right. just like leave my wife's name out of your mouth. I think that's when he actually break, broke down. Like that, that's when you can see the frustration, you know, because I believe if he didn't say that those words, people was going to say like it's fake what he did. Right. But, but when you react, like even his speech, you can see, like, I don't know why he always want to cry. Like he was actually, he was, he was about to cry. I think that part, that's when like you realize that, oh, there's something going on here. And at the time you, she, you were saying that on the other video that we discover, she was laughing. <laughs> you see what I mean? So it is really crazy. Okay. After that, actually apologize and everything. And he went out, they have a party. Everything was good for him. It's like, I went there. I apologize to the Oscar people. I didn't apologize to Chris Rock. I don't care. They showed a video of them dancing and everything as well. Um, what do you guys think about that? He shows his no personality. He shows there's, no, there's more. There's no remorse. There's no uh there's no accountability. There's no responsibility. I mean, that would be like going out on the street, somebody makes you mad, and you punch him in the face, and you're like, okay, we're all good now. He's down. I'm going back to my party. Like, you have to really take responsibility. You that's assault. It's against the law. But more than it's against the law, it's against what you should do as a human being with a good brain. Is that this really is just real what you or do. Is he like his wife? Because the thing about this situation, the tricky side about it is like at the start, we kind of feel sorry for Will Smith. We see him as a victim for you know, the way of reacting, everything. But as the story goes, it looks more like, I don't know if he's manipulated or something, but he's like part of it. He's actually making things worse for himself. At the same point, you're not even going to feel sorry about the guy. When you see him dancing and laughing, you're like, really? He apologized, but not to, to Chris Rock after that, of course. But like, yeah. So there are many factors that happen once he got back from the chair. Mm. The, um, the award, the producers had released a statement and I'm sure to, you know, not take accountability or the liability for what happened, the physical um, battery, but he did not leave. If you were aware of what you just did yeah, and you yeah. knew that you physically assaulted someone and you were asked to leave, you leave. But furthermore, the Academy did not remove this person. They left it up to him for an option. I would have felt some type of way if I was just assaulted at my job for doing my job and they did not remove the threat. He should have been removed. And the night should have carried on. Him mm. and his wife. Yeah. And I, I think about it, Chris Rock, he didn't even put, put a charge as well. What do you guys think? I think that was kind of mature for him or... Do you think he done it just like in a way of showing like, you know what? 
I'm more like, or do you think like you guys think like you should have put a charge or something? It's it's a I think it's a cultural thing that's going on right now, especially in America, being black and dealing with police. I think Chris Rock did not want to send another black man to jail. Yeah. And it stopped him from pressing charges. I think that is really what's going on. But Chris Rock is smart because he is not responding to the incident. And the only thing he is saying is, I am processing this because he's waiting to see what the Academy response will be on April 18th to know how he should proceed with them because they are ultimately responsible for his safety while being hired to do such service. Right. I mean, I think Chris actually responded in the best way he could. Yeah. I think keeping it away from necessary, uh, you know, law enforcement is also the best way to handle it. Yeah, I think that I'm not why. so sure there won't be a lawsuit down the road They're trying, actually, uh, for yeah. his assault. But I think in the way it happened and the fact that it was, of course, broadcast to millions and millions and millions of people, I think Chris handled it the best way he could. And as far as any repercussions from it, we'll, we'll wait and see because I don't even think the Academy knows what to do with it. They should take matters into their own hands. And I yeah. don't think they're doing that. But what, what, yeah, yeah you want to add something, Tracy? Yeah, go on. You're, you're dealing with two A list celebrities. Like, what do you do to one that you won't offend the other? You know, they are in a tough, tough space right now. Um, and the world is watching because, you know, here I have seen so many things happen, violence occur, you know, with over the smallest thing. So if consequences are not rendered, even to a celebrity, it basically condones that behavior. So the next time your son gets in a fight over a female and violence, you know, is rendered, it's condoning the societal norms. Yeah. Our, yeah. What we do is setting societal norms. It sets the standard. Right. So the right. world is watching in this scenario. Exactly. And this is exactly opposite of the way someone should act when put mm -hmm. into this position. And when, when even a child sees a celebrity, one as big as Will Smith, behave this way, it gives them permission to behave this way. Yeah. Because even look at his, his career, he has always advocated during his rap career, not cussing, you know, keeping clean jokes, keeping, you know, clean fun, things of that nature. And now you see this man over a matter of one night. Yeah, it was crazy. Everything was out. Basically dismantle anything he put anything. out in the public. You have a lot of, I think... Recently, he's one of those people. I think one of the best actually have a lot of quotes and inspiration videos online. He's, he's that guy. I feel like what happened that night kind of like destroyed that image of him. Like people were never going to see him the same. They, as you say, the cursing, they all the thing. I think they're, not, they're never going to see that the same, actually. Right. right. Just because like maybe his brand forever. Yeah. His wife couldn't even control that. I don't know. This is crazy. The fact she even don't doesn't care about this. And then you have the apology as well, the apology as well that he made. What do you guys think about it? I feel like it was more like a pressure based on the what the Oscar actually was putting what, on him. That's apology? what he wanted to. Or to actually to Chris Rock. Yeah, well, I think it's one where basically I totally believe his attorney said you need to apologize. Yeah, yeah. And you need to do it now. Right. Because if you don't apologize you're going to get sued or worse. Yeah. And he still might get sued. Yeah. But this way they can say, okay, well, he made an apology because if he was sincerely apologetic, he doesn't sound sincere. He would that, have that, that said it was. that night. Mm. Right. If he was sincerely apologetic to Chris Rock, he would have said it. There would not have been a delay of a day to put that apology out there. And he should have spoken it, not written it. But I agree. You know. I agree. You know, it's all about the legalities now, the um, lessening the liability, showing remorseful, showing that it was an emotional reaction, not intentional. That all plays a part in the amount that someone's going to get in a lawsuit. So the fact that they're having him commit these steps, 
we all know that a lawsuit will happen, whether we know about it or if it's disclosed is another story. But we, we know a lawsuit is going to come. Chris Rock is very smart about not really um, replying to any of this right now yeah. and waiting yeah. to see how things unfold for the academy so he can um, have his attorney act accordingly as well. Yeah, I think the good thing about this is like uh, Chris Rock really doesn't have to do anything because the way you react is good. You did bad to me. I'm here. I'm just chilling. Like the thing is now the academy, the academy have to do something just so this kind of thing cannot happen again. Because if they don't do anything, that means like you are allowed to do whatever you want to do when you don't like a joke of from a comedian, you're allowed to go there and approach somebody and nothing going to happen to you. So for their own standard, they're going to have to do something. And I also heard Real Smith, I think he actually resigned from the... He did resign from, from the, the Yeah, from the Academy, um, the Oscar Academy. Yeah, he actually resigned. I think... Do you Which think I just think because... is like another step in the temper tantrum. Yeah. Like, I feel like we're, we're not taking responsibility. So now you guys don't like me, I'm gone. Like... Yeah. yeah. What it's is big, that? Uh... You know, I, I, I think it's just step three of his temper tantrum. And I think it's really the Academy separating themselves from Will Smith as well, saying, hey, look, you did something. You have to be responsible for it. Instead of saying that we released you or terminated our contract with you, we'll let you resign within this amount of hours because they can't be associated with it. They, they're they going to have to make um, they're going to have to make a decision regarding his actions and conduct. And I hope it is by the book because if not, you see where money buys favoritism. Then oh, he's held above the law. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do, do you guys think they should take back the uh, whatever award that they give him that night? The Academy Award. Uh, you know what? I I I am a strong believer of what is earned is earned. Yeah. Okay. And if he earned that award for his his movie, he earned it. I, yeah. I don't think that honestly plays anything, has anything to do with this. It is a totally separate thing. It, you know, it is like, it is like taking a child and they've earned an A on a test and then they get in trouble at home and their parents say, okay, well, I'm going to call your teacher because you should get a C on that test. What's earned is earned. It had one thing has nothing to do with the other. I think the only thing they messed up is the fact they gave it to him in the, I don't know, in a like joyful and normal way. environment. Yeah, I think that, that they was gave very it to him on the show. That, that they could have that, not yeah, done. Yeah, that was disrespectful to Chris Rock as well. The fact he just slapped me and you guys just, the show can just keep going. Like, I think what they was going to do, maybe tell him to leave, give him the price online or whatever, just send it to him. Like, they wouldn't have to do such a, such a show. I think that was very, he didn't deserve it, to be honest. And that was just Had Chris Rock too. accept it, wouldn't that been funny? <laughs> <laughs> and accepting you know, for Will Smith is Chris Rock. <laughs> he's somebody actually can do that. <laughs> I, I, I agree with Celia. You know, he earned his, um, his Oscar, right? It's similar to a child graduating and at the graduation, he makes an inappropriate um, behavior or action. And then we say, oh, you um you didn't earn your diploma. No, he earned his diploma. He cannot stay at the graduation. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. he should he should have been removed. His Oscar could have gave, been given to him on the way out. Yeah, you know? They could have just done that thing when they have like when they're summarizing the lesser Oscars that nobody really cares about, and they're like, you know, Joe Schmo got this Oscar for you know set design, mm -hmm. whoever right. that is. Clap clap clap. They could have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I heard Although like he I didn't want to leave. Having, uh, Chris Rock I heard like he didn't really want to leave actually that night. He didn't. But you know what? I, I think again, to Celia's point, temper tantrum. Because you took away, it was selfish. You took away from other people who were there and deserving to be there. We had the first time um, women actually hosting the show as well. Three, um, two out of the three were actually women of color. Yeah, you had a co-producer, um, a man of colors um, producing it. So it was a a, a very moment. important yeah. moment, and it was overshadowed by pettiness. Yeah, because exactly. I heard like there was a group of I don't know what that group is. As you said, there is a lot of 
you know, people from the, from a lot of black people actually was really like there and then winning a lot of stuff there. And it was one group that actually for the first time, they won like a lot of awards as well. And they were so upset because the whole Will Smith situation actually just like closed everything. Like nobody actually paid attention to like that moment. You know, it was a moment for them to celebrate with the fans and everybody. And now everybody's talking about the whole Will Smith thing. Like, I think that was really selfish. I think a lot of people can actually put charge against the the people that organized the you know the Oscar and then of course we have we have Smith as well that, that's what I actually believe yeah, it um, tainted the whole show and yeah. from that point on yes I think yeah. but the ratings went up by fifty two percent or fifty six percent I think ran up <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. yeah and the Chris Rock's, Rock's Chris Rock's um yeah Chris comedy uh tour is doing great it's so. coming to my city as well i think i might actually book i was not gonna go but now i feel like you yeah, may not be go. able to get tickets unless you're willing <laughs> yeah, to invest he's like going seven hundred dollars yeah. <laughs> the thing is it's actually kind of working good for him as well i mean the whole the, the whole situation you know like and there's negative one negative press always works well i mean the one, sad thing is yeah it always works well there's one thing i wanted to add i know like uh, celia you always talk about like something about pump and parenting one thing Will Smith, track, a lot of people do that. Now he's trying to blame it on his childhood. He's saying like, you know what? You have that trauma when he was a child and everything. But do you think in that situation today, do you think it's like, we just got to take it that way? Like you have a frustration as a child, the way you grew up, that's the reason you react that way. Or I believe it's more to do with the way his relationship with his wife, the way you just, I don't think it's something to do with his childhood. Or do you think Which we just got to take it? Like, okay, that's the childhood. Let's just take it that way. Since we talk about mental In mentoring. all honesty, the way you were raised permanently, you know, or I shouldn't say permanently because it's fixable, affects the way you are as an adult. Yeah. That's why I'm so adamant about having people stop yelling at their kids because it is so damaging to a child. But, and, and it's even been proven that, trauma that a child who is an infant for the first three months that is not given nurturing and loving behavior when they you know they need to eat they're fed that kind of stuff is hugely traumatic to a person but the fact is you have to then take responsibility for your own life and there are plenty of people out there in the world that can help you turn things around see things differently if you're going to be a parent, help you parent better so that you're not repeating those generational cycles of dysfunction and abuse. And you're the grown up now. So let's take responsibility and fix these things. Let's not continue the blame cycle. Continue to say, well, I act the way I do because pff, that's what happened to me as a kid. So I'm good with that. You know, I, I'm, I'm just aggressive or like his, shot, his son did. That's how we act in this family. Oh, well, that's wonderful. You know, so actually you're now raising the next generation to act as aggress aggressively as you act. Congratulations. When does it stop? When does someone say it stops with me? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to fix what I need to fix. And then I'm going, if I'm going to make more children, more human beings, I'm going to be more intentional with that. I would uh, piggyback off of what she said and say, when it will it stop? When will it stop? The fact that he is aware of his trauma and his triggers, that means that he can be aware enough to fix it. Yeah. Right? And the fact that he has not fixed it means that he's comfortable in his toxicity. Exactly. He's taking responsibility and for that. Right. So it doesn't stop you just because you have childhood traumas. I mean, we can all say that we have been in a traumatic response yeah, um, um, experience. And let's be clear. Trauma is not the event itself. It's your re remote, your emotional response to the event that is traumatic. Right. That's why we can both experience the same event and one can be traumatized and the other can't. It's my right. emotional response to it. So we can all say that we have experienced traumatic things in our childhood. However, it does not condone you assaulting and battering another human being. It does not condone you having toxicity, you know, toxic behavior. 
goes back to that blame thing. I'm not taking responsibility for it. It's somebody else's fault. Somebody, be it my parents, be it my wife, whoever, it's someone else's fault. It's not mine. But then it reflects off of society too. We have became a pointing um, society where I can point the finger and say, oh, it was this person's fault. And now the responsibility is off of you and someone else is taking accountability. But now they can point the finger because it, there's a chain and no one wants to take accountability. Instead of saying, it stops here with me. I yeah. should have did better. I am responsible for my, re my actions and my reactions to a situation. And that's the only way we're going to change the world. Yeah, is one just person at a time is each person saying, I am going to be different. I am going to take responsibility for my own reactions and actions. I'm and going to, to mm -hmm. act responsibly and think yeah. about what I'm doing. Take a moment to step back and think about the way I'm going to react. So my reaction and my action is constructive and is and produces more of a calm reaction so that the other person also is given permission yeah. to react calmly. Wow, that was very nice from you too, actually. Yeah, Trace, you wanted to add something? I say like you. Oh, I was just yeah. gonna say, in the words of Michael Jackson, the man in the yeah. mirror. Yeah, Michael <laughs> exactly. Jackson. Exactly, it starts with the man in the mirror. Yeah, the I mirror. think. Exactly, if I, if I that the, is a fact. About the Michael Jackson, I feel like, as I said to you from the start, I feel like there's a lot of double standard because Michael Jackson, people you've been used to make fun of him for his skin color, for all those things, and nothing, nothing, nothing ever happened. Like, you know, the media, nothing ever happened. But now people acting like this is actually the first time. And before we finish, when it comes to Chris Rock, I know we talk about the whole Will Smith. The thing about Will Smith, at the start, you, we kind of see him as a victim. And he makes things for worse for himself. It's very hard to put him like to just see him as a victim. It's very hard because he make a lot of things to for people to just react as well. The party, the apologize, the halfway, and then now he just like it looks more like he doesn't know what he's doing, but at the same time he's like he don't care. So why do people have to care so much when he he just doesn't care? So what do you guys think about Chris Rock? Do you think what he did is like? I know his reaction makes things more simple for him. Even if you feel some type of way, but the way you react, we're just going to feel like, you know what? Yeah, let's just say it's fine. But do you think we can actually somehow blame him for what happened that night? Because of his joke? No. Yeah, the joke. Oh, no. yeah. I mean, I I, that, that was the only jokes. thing, just a joke. You Stuff done is funny. Yet. You know, and his job as hired by the Academy was to make jokes. Mm. And this, the joke he made was not, it's not like when they do these roasts and the jokes are constantly going over and so over and insulting well, like a person. Seconds. It was not even, it was a, a basic comment about the fact that she's bald. And like you said, you know, Fun Christ, that, that he may not even know that she's bald for a reason. I mean, let's face it. How many people shave their heads nowadays? Everybody shaves their head. Men, women, it doesn't matter. People have shaved heads all over the place. Her daughter and has so a shaved head. Yeah. I think, you know, as a comedian, as a higher comedian, hired to make the audience laugh, that he was doing his job. It was, you know, it was not an insulting joke. I, she didn't take it very well, but, you know, a lot of people can't laugh at themselves. Yeah. I think that he does have to have some type of responsibility because the words did come out of his mouth. And discretion, because there's something else there between the Smiths and Chris Rock. 2016 Oscars, he did um, say things about Jada. Now, do I feel like he only targeted Jada? No. But whatever it is, there was not, you know, a good understanding amongst them. So when he said, Jada, I love you, it was almost preparing her to hear the next statement. Y yeah, so this he is the next statement. It may yeah. not have been well received. 
And that's similar to someone saying with no disrespect. And then the next statement is disrespectful, but they don't want you to take it as disrespect. Disrespect is disrespect, no matter what you brace for. But you don't so think as I, brother, like they should like, you should have went there before the show or whatever relationship that they have say, you know what? I know we are about to do this, but I just don't want you to, I, I, I don't think as black people as well, I don't think it's that hard for them. Like, you know, to talk on the level. I, I, don't I don't think, think so he either. expected the reaction. I don't think anyone ex- expected oh, he should get that used reaction. To it. Yeah. But I, do I say that he has to take accountability? Because he did make a documentary about here. You know, you don't know what people are dealing with. It's not um, widely known for w- Black women to just shave off their hair. So he could have seen or felt something was off. But the fact that he said, Jada, I love you. He knew his comment would not have been well received. So therefore, he should have used a little bit more discretion. Can I blame him for going on with the joke? No, because I think that um, G.I. Jane is a woman of empowerment. Um, she does match, you know, the, the image of what was played, a woman with shaved head. So, you know, I, I think he did his job, ultimately. Mm. But, and then I was going to add something. I think as well, when he did that, uh, as a comedian, that's what he's supposed to do anyway. And him saying, I love you because he knew, like, this is a joke. We, sometimes we do that as well. You know, we're making fun of, like, people. we talking, we say a lot of things. Like, you know, I love you, man. Like, you, you can't say that just, like, to show, like, you know what? I'm just making fun of you. I'm just kidding. And even friends, they do this kind of thing. I think that's the reason why you, you wanted just to prepare her. Like, you know what? You know I'm coming for you every time you know, you there, I'm going to come after you. Like, it's just like basic. And that's what comedian does. And that's why Dave Chappelle, I've been banned saying time and he's back again. Dave Chappelle, like people like him because he's like, he just say things the way he make people feel uncomfortable. And that's why we love comedian. You know, you want to go there, spend right. the, like, you know, the, like a Friday night to laugh because you want to just like, you want them to make you feel like, oh my God, wow, I can't believe he said this is funny. That's what we want. But if we're going to exactly. start judging, like, Chris Rock for whatever he said, it's even better the fact he said I love you first. That was even to make things better. Like that showed the respect and the relationship that they kind of have. And then he and, and Dave know, Chappelle he, is the first one to say, if you don't like what I'm saying, just turn me off. You know, right. you don't have to watch me. But he was gonna move on too. If anyone looked at that clip, he said, Oh, it was a GI Jane joke. Okay. You know, and he was ready to move on and transition to something else. But what made it stop was Will Smith walking on stage. So everyone's like, "Uh uh-oh, what is he going to (laughs) say? What is he going to do? And so even Chris Rock didn't expect it. It seemed like he leaned in to have something whispered in his ear or something of that nature. And he even said, Richard, uh uh-oh, you know? Yeah. He was seeing a character he didn't see will smith as the protector he was in character himself so he would have never thought in a million years that this man would have rendered physical you know i agree yeah and do you think do you think comedian are being up um hypocrite today comedian the fact they are not really standing you think they should stand more with like uh chris rock just to protect the freedom of speech freedom of jokes we should see that more. Or oh, people are really because I know Will Smith is not like a small guy as well. Will Smith is like he's a legend. That's why people are like trying to be smart. Both of them are legend. That's the situation. It's like you gotta be maybe politically correct or some some type. You think that there's not enough support when it comes to that, or people just feel like I, oh, I prefer just to why just to be out of there. I don't want to say anything. I think we focus too much on being politically correct. Yeah. And I think it is not a comedian's job to be politically correct. And unfortunately, I think we've lost a lot of great comedians due to that. Yeah. And I think a lot of problems in society today is we have lost the ability to laugh at ourselves. Mm. I mean, people have been laughing at themselves for years. We do funny things, groups, cultures. There's funny little things we do and they're funny. But, you know... They're part of our culture. They're what we do. And, and if you can't find humor and instead take insult to every single thing that's out there and everybody has to watch what they say, how they say it, all of that, 
I think the art of comedy is going to be long lost. Yeah. And this world needs comedians. I think that we have become too serious as a society to where we are losing our voice to speak. Chris Rock did not do anything different than a Bernie Mac, you know, Arsenio Hall, a Martin Lawrence, uh, um, what, what else Dave is there? A uh, Chris Tucker. Yeah. You know, he worked the room and he went towards the guests. Um, the nominees. He hit almost everyone throughout that night. So to say that it was just projected to Will and Jada, he did not stay on them the whole night. It was not awkward. It was, ha ha, your husband laughed at it. Will laughed at it. He was doing his job. Whether all of his jokes were funny or not reflects on him as a comedian. That is his job. That is his productivity. But I don't think that we should have to censor ourselves when we're doing our job to a point where we cannot make light on, on something that the recipient is making light of. She embraced it. These are her own words four days before the incident. She loves her bald head. She doesn't care what anyone um, says about it or speaks about it. Those are her own words. So now is the issue because you may not like whom it came from. That's an internal issue. All right. So before we finish, I want to ask you guys one more question. It's just going to be about, do you think Jada should actually, what do you think she should do now based on the whole thing happened? If you are actually, I don't want, I don't, I know that you guys don't want to be on the skin, but what do you think, what do you think she should do now to make things a little bit like, yeah, I think maybe she should to get marriage counseling. Because <laughs> <laughs> first of all, she needs individual counseling because she has a lot of things inside of her that she has stop to stop her show. Right? Maybe <laughs> no she more red talk. To. No more red talk. Got a lot going on. She can she can produce <clears throat> it, but she needs to actually understand who Jada is in therapy and not having to be front and center and so vocal about personal matters. And I think that. With society, there is no more sacred, like, conversations, no more sacred behavior. A husband and wife duty, whether you choose to be open or not, used to be sacred. I'm not talking to my girlfriends about what my husband does and don't do. That used to be personal. Mm. And now when you go and you open up your love life, and let's face it, had Jada been a man and preyed on a a girl who was emotionally damaged and going to the parents for help, we would have been advocating to throw him under the jail. She did it as a woman mm. and nothing happened. It's like so in, she, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tracy. So she, sorry. she definitely needs counseling, but I say the, you know, the latter, the disrespect is the latter, the apology. She disrespected her husband on national TV. She did not undergird him. She did not protect him. And her, I was waiting for her as a woman to make um, a statement about protecting her husband in a sense of we are taking this time to reflect on our actions yeah. as a family and we wish for respect. That would have said enough. It's a we thing, not him, exactly. not an I. Or any of that. But I think I feel like she's trying to see herself like, oh, she, you say whatever you say. I was just there. I haven't said anything. She's just trying to put herself out of it. That's the reason she why she's that. again not taking personal responsibility. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and it's it like you know, in the movie Goodwill Hunting, when Robin Williams talks about his wife, his his uh dead wife, and he talks about in their marriage how there are things in a relationship that are these little funny things that only you know about your partner. You know, and I think they were talking about like farting under the covers or something like that. <laughs> and she didn't even know she did it. Oh, and man. he said, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff that makes a relationship so strong and so special. And when you air all of that, you dehumanize the relationship and you dehumanize your partner. 
Yeah. And I think there is just so much there. So much. Because we are always been open about the open relationship. We're never really like been shy about it. He spoke about it many times. It's enough to say, you know what? Yeah, our relationship is quite special. We're kind of open. That's it. And people know what you mean. But she went to more details and everything and then say like, you know, I think that's like, as a man, he kind of like play with his ego as well. He feels small. And then the fact he was dating, like, you know, sleeping with like uh, his son friends as well. It, it's just the whole thing. And then, yeah. It's crossing boundaries. She has boundary issues. Mm. Let's just face it. You know, you don't go into details about your relationship. And one thing that everyone needs to learn is when you put certain topics out on social media, you're putting it out there on a public platform with no constraints. That means it is a free for all and you cannot determine the path that it goes down. So when you say that you slept with a younger man who was your child's friend, when you say that you are in love with another man and your husband was a second option, when you say that your husband's going to, you know, be understanding to whatever you do because he wants you to be happy and you have no regards for him as your best friend. You are saying to the world how you feel about the man that you said I do to. Being a wife is more than a piece of paper. And, and it sends a message. Number one, it emasculates Will Smith, mm -hmm. which could have been also an underlying reason he needed to have this kind of macho release. Right. But it also, I always say when you publicly talk about your partner in a negative way, it reflects back on you. This is a person that you married, you had children with, and supposedly you love. So really, what is this saying about you? And, you know, but you we, we know, you know, how it reflects on her. He's an A-lister. How many, he's winning an Oscar. Only five black men in 94 years have won Oscars. That is money. It's cheaper to keep her. At How many you point. say that again? How many numbers say? Sorry. Five, five black men in 94 years. Wow. Wow. That's that was a big day. That was like it was a huge day. I understand why uh, now I understand why a lot gone. of people I, I understand why a lot of people are upset because it was a special night. And yeah. <sighs> it was a very special night. And you know, there's a lot of things um going on about oh, I don't care about the Oscars. It's you know. I don't care where we are. If you disrespect me, I'm going to, you know, stick up for myself. I don't care about the white supremacy that you say that we have to act about. We got to understand that we had a history before Europeans. Yeah. We had a, a code of conduct before Europeans. We were royalty before the um, Europeans. So we had a way of acting. Show some decorum. Not everything needs a physical response. Not everything needs to be um, addressed at the moment. There is a time and place. And it's a process to go through. Acting emotional should not always be the first response and then justifying it after. That's where your maturity comes in. That's when your emotional intellect shows and shows where you are in the spectrum. A lot exactly. of things could have been done where Will could have came out as a hero, a standing ovation, and even a sponsorship for him and his wife to speak out against alopecia if they wanted to keep the joke, you know, focused on that versus their marriage. There was a lot of ways to turn it around. Well, unfortunately, got turned around to the negative. To the negative. Ruined yeah. the rest of the show. Yeah. And totally ruined his moment of winning that Oscar. It, it was it was a ruined moment. It was a big, big night. It was a big night. And I wish that everyone who was a recipient of their um, nominees and Oscars could have had time to shine and relive that moment in a positive light. But that Oscar, the 94th Oscar, will always be tainted by, oh, you remember that slap? Hmm. Not yeah. that Denzel Washington was in like 526 um, movies and finally won an Oscar, right? You wow. know, being the fourth black man. Not Will Smith being the fifth in almost 100 years. Not the fact that we had the first black um, production um, company co 
co-editing and co-writing and, you know, running it. Nothing. That's going to go down in history as a smack, as immaturity, as um, a lack of emotional intelligence. And this is what our culture stands for. They are too aggressive. I agree. Wow. So... Yo, thank you guys again. I think like we went, <laughs> we went to a lot of detail. I think the thing about the whole Will Smith situation, people, when I when I actually decide to make this topic, people was like, oh, you know what, you guys, I don't really talk about all these gossip things, but the thing is, this is different. This topic is quite different, as you say, Tracy, about the the Oscar, about the in the ninety four years, right? And black yeah. people only have won like five times, and this is like shocking you know like there was a lot of things happening and then about relationships a relationship between like a man and a woman like couples as well childhood as you know celia actually you know mentioned as well there's a lot of things we can all learn from what happened to the way of Miss situation that's the reason why i feel like this was really a good conversation i hope like people are actually gonna we all gonna remember something out of it and before we finish anything else you guys want to add anything you want to say i'll let you Whatever, I just want to point out that we don't care about Will and Jada in a sense. Yeah. We can switch their names out with anyone names. We're looking at the characteristics that these individuals hold and how it's commonly seen amongst us in our communities today. And the fact that something needs to be done by it. Awareness needs to be brought. And unfortunately, Will's action brought awareness to these characteristics and the need to actually have it addressed. We care less about their marriage because guess what? They're still going to be married. They're still going to make millions of dollars. And he's still going to go on to, you know, to work in his field, whether it's going to be a B list or a list, he's still going to continue on. But it's the characteristics that were displayed. What it's saying um, to society is what is accepted in the norm. That's what I care about. Yes, exactly. And, and that's why I started the International Day of Calm. And that's why I'm not just telling you on Tuesday, April 5th, be calm. We're actually having 30 plus speakers from around the world teaching you how to de-stress different areas of your life so you can live a calmer life, react better, take responsibility like and learn. And, you know, that's what we have to do. Each of us have, has to take responsibility for our own actions and our own reactions and stop the blaming and start accepting what we need to do to change. Celia, how do we contact you? How do we actually participate? Okay. So to participate in the day of calm, you go to dayofcalm.org. Yeah. And the official day of calm is Tuesday, April 5th. That's the day my father passed away two years ago. Oh. But the summit, because we have so many great speakers, is now on Monday and Tuesday. So uh, that goes April 4th and April 5th. It will take place on my YouTube channel and in the Facebook group, um, Day of Calm, the International Day of Calm, the group, not the business page. Um, and there'll be live speakers and there'll be speakers that you can ch check. And uh, when you go to the website, you'll be able to register for classes. But if you're in the group, you'll be able to see them live too, even if you didn't register. And it's on everything. It's on finances. It's on career. It's on relationships. That's it's good. on parenting. It's it. There's everything there. There's only one class, my class, which is how to stop yelling at your kids once and for all. That is the only class that will be on Zoom because I am sharing the stage with Billie Jean, who is a... Uh, a um, online marketing guru and he has invited me to share his stage with him. So that is the only class that's on Zoom. So in order to see that class live, you have to register for that class. So the as you heard, ones, anybody want to, yeah, Get anybody ahead, actually want to get in touch, I will make sure, um, Celia, when I finish, I make sure you send me the link of everything. I'm going to put it on the description as well. So if anybody want to get in touch with it, in touch with yes. Celia make sure you actually do it and also I think I would love to have you on my podcast again I really want to talk about why you I mean what you stand for why you believe the you know the yelling part with the kids and the calm as well I think I need to talk about that topic with you Tracy you are welcome if you want we can actually come back we can all have this conversation together I think I, I know, know I think we like... should all be best friends now <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, have a second home in Maryland, so I, I'll pop oh, in. Oh, good, Tracy. We come have coffee. We love coffee. We like yeah, coffee. I mean, like, actually, yeah. this was this was tea, though. I, I'm, I'm drinking water, so I'm more. <laughs> All right. So yeah, thank you again for the, for the I don't want to stop. But thank you. Stop. It was a thank pleasure. Thank you again for having you guys today. Anybody want to get in touch with Celia, I'm going to put the link there. Same for Tracy as well. If you want some advice or anything, I'm, gonna, I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys, I mean, you do a lot of things with your work as well. And yeah, thank you. So you guys know, make sure you subscribe to my podcast. We're going to have other episodes with Celia and Tracy as well. Thank you again, guys, you. and have a good time. Thank you, Funkers. All right. So that's the best part. Finish. <laughs>